modernist transport planning was rationalist, scientific, deceptively value-free, and based on a predictive mathematical model. It was called the four-step model, and is acronymed as FSM or 4SM. Though much adapted, the model's four steps are still in use. They are trip generation, in which origins and destinations are analysed, trip distribution, in which trips from origins to destinations are predicted, modal split, in which predictions of mode choice are made by car, bus, train, etc., and trip assignment, which predicts which travellers will use which modes. The unstated assumption of 20th century 4SM was that after analysing travel demand, new roads or other infrastructure would be built. So critics described the method as predict and provide, or build it and they will come. When expanding road capacity to accommodate ever more vehicles proved impossible for both financial and environmental reasons, the emphasis shifted to postmodern travel demand management, which can also be described as predict and decide. Often, the decision is to reduce the use of private cars, following the policy James Jacobs advocated as the attrition of automobiles by cities. A common aspect of demand management is support for active and sustainable travel modes, such as cycling and walking. So, here's a proposal for adapting four-step modelling to cycleway network planning. The first step deals with the existing and potential demand for cycle infrastructure for a range of purposes, including journeys to work, to school, to stations, to the shops and to leisure attractions. This information can come from traffic counts, from land use maps, from census data and from cycling apps like Strava. Clearly, the different categories of demand have different requirements and need to be estimated in different ways. Strava data, for example, comes predominantly from cyclists who enjoy travelling quickly. The second step in Cycleway 4SM deals with the supply of cycle infrastructure. It includes inventory and assessment of desire lines and of routes already in use by cyclists. Both quantitative and qualitative data are necessary because high-quality infrastructure attracts more users than low-quality infrastructure. Other things being equal, cyclists will choose green routes in preference to noisy, dirty, polluted routes. Cycle routes are usually assessed for quality of service using safety, directness, coherence, comfort and attractiveness as assessment criteria. With regard to capacity, data is scarce but indicates that a 3.5 metre wide cycleway will carry between four and eight times as many people as a 3.5 metre road in use by cars. The third step deals with mode share and is important because raising the mode share of cycling is a specific objective for managing urban travel networks. This applies to complete journeys and to the journey stages at each end of a trip by train or bus. The starting point is an analysis of the existing mode share and its variation in different parts of the city. Targets can then be set with regard to the mode share ratios for comparable cities. It's a political choice rather than a technical choice. The fourth step, network planning, involves the funding, phasing and construction of a citywide cycleway network. 
individual cycleways are then designed and appraised. Their costs and benefits should be compared with those of competing transport projects, including alternative cycleway routes. The benefit-cost ratio for investing in cycling tends to be way above the ratio for other kinds of rapid mass transport. Cycle networks do well because they take much less time to build, they don't generate negative side effects, they cost little to maintain, and they make a substantial contribution to public health objectives. But they do affect communities, and this necessitates the involvement of local people. It should be done by genuine participation in the planning process, instead of by tokenist consultation. I see the traditional four-step predictive model as modernist, the travel demand management approach as postmodern, and four-step cycle network planning as post-postmodern because it rests on a belief in sustainability.